The Catholic Channel, Sirius XM 129 presents Sounds from the Spires with Dr. Jennifer Pasquale, Music Director of St. Patrick's Cathedral. And you're listening to Sounds from the Spires on the Catholic Channel of Sirius XM 129. Today I have a very special guest and he is in Massachusetts. It is Paul Jernberg. How are you, Paul? I'm fine, thank you. How yeah. are you? Good, thank you. And thank you for joining us here on Sounds from the Spires on the Catholic Channel. It's a really great honor to have you. Thank you so much. It's, it's my honor and pleasure as well. Yeah, Paul is the founding director of the Magnificat Academy, which is now known as the Magnificat Institute. Of sacred music. Of exactly. sacred music. Yes. And, that, and that's still based in Worcester, right? Well, near Worcester. We're in yeah. Lancaster, which are just a few miles north of Worcester. Okay, yeah. And uh, how long ago did you found this? Well, Magnificat Academy, as you mentioned, was actually founded in 2005 in the little town of Warren, Massachusetts. And we started out as a little Catholic choir school uh, way back then. And we were able to go uh, three years as a uh, full-blown uh, choir school with academic curriculum, singing every day, singing concerts, uh, doing all sorts of things with our choir. Uh, then came 2008 and the economic crisis, and we were not able to continue with our academy. Mm -hmm. uh, we continued on in, in association with St. Paul's Cathedral in Worcester for a number of years mm -hmm. uh, as an after-school program. But then, uh, then I came back to Trivium School, where I've taught uh, many years now, since 19, 1995. Then in 2017... Uh, I was approached by a group of people that wanted to help me to work full time uh, for the renewal of sacred music mm -hmm. in, in our church, in, in the Catholic Church. So 2017 was really the beginning of Magnificat Institute. Okay. And so I've, we've been going since, since then. Uh, so it's been almost five years. Uh-huh. Yeah. And Magnificat Institute, does that uh, incorporate uh, any of your work from... Worcester? Oh, yes. I mean, really, a part of what we're doing with Magnificat Institute, a part of what our our sponsors, our patrons are supporting us for is the, my work as a composer. So that's been going on for a long time. And much of the composing I've done over the years has been in the midst of a very, very busy schedule. Uh, so I, I didn't have time to, to prepare for publication, a lot of these things. So uh -huh. now... I'm able to draw from that whole uh, repertoire of lots of compositions from the past 20 years, really, and, and uh, publish scores and make recordings and so forth. So yes, been able to draw from that. And certainly every experience I've had, both as a music, as a teacher at Trivium and as a music director in a number of different parishes, all of that is vitally important in the work I'm doing now, mm -hmm. because really the work of our Institute is meant to be at the service of, you might say, normal parishes, typical parishes <laughs> throughout, throughout our country and, and the English speaking world. And, and if I hadn't actually been in different situations with different needs, I wouldn't be able to speak to these people, to the people we're working with, with, uh, a sense of empathy and uh, an authority, you might say, because it's something now that I've been through in, in many different situations. I understand. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. And what would you say would be the mission of the Institute for those who have never heard of the Institute before? Yes. The, the mission of our Magnificat Institute is, is very ambitious. It's the renewal of sacred music in the Roman rite of the Catholic Church. I mean, and I think probably it might be a little bit even more specific to say, to be faithful contributors to the renewal of sacred music because in our own small way, because this is certainly a very large movement uh, in our country and throughout the world. There are many people who have devoted their life's work to this, uh, to the renewal of sacred music. And uh, so we, we just want to, we want to be faithful in our, uh, in the particular gifts that we've been given to, to share in this broader movement. Right. Goodness. That's great work that you do for the church. And so your compositions are available through the Institute or That's you, right. are you self-published? Well, we Magnificat Institute actually is the publisher. Okay. The publisher. So, but 
most of my compositions can be found at paulgernberg.com, mm -hmm. which is one of our websites. We also have magnificatinstitute.org, and that's where people can find out more about our broader apostolate to parishes and dioceses. Wow, that's magnificent. So it sounds like a huge organization with a huge staff. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not huge, but we are we tend to be very ambitious in our in our aspirations and our vision. Uh -huh. And and we have a right now we have I have one full time assistant and another part time assistant, mm -hmm. and they're they're great. And so we're we're constantly juggling all sorts of things. Sure, uh, that's yeah. great, magnificent. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. And the reason that you and I are connected today on this interview, Paul, is through two mutual friends of ours, uh, Richard Clark and Michael Olbosch. And I saw Michael, I visited with him a little bit because of our friend, his and my uh, mutual friend, uh, Father Steve Lewis now, was ordained in Rochester, New York. And um, he mentioned you. And also we broadcast the Kyrie from your mass of St. Philip Neri. Uh, earlier this summer, but uh, tell us about this mass. Now that I'm talking to the composer, how did this mass come about? Well, good question. Yeah, it was really the immediate uh, inspiration, you might say, was being involved uh, in the, how do I say, in, in the editing of the Roman Missal in the new translation that came out. And being asked to review many of the chant uh, settings. And so I, uh, I had the opportunity to be, I was just immer totally immersed in this, uh, that all these chants uh, as we were approaching the publication of this new translation of the Missal. And um, it was wonderful. I mean, and I, I was just so inspired by this work and by the, the, this opportunity for new beginnings. Uh, with the music of the mass, mm -hmm. and uh, and I also had, um, but I'm trying to think of how to make this transition now because I, in doing this, it was a source, a great source of inspiration for my own idea for for contributing to the uh, the repertoire for parishes mm -hmm. for this new translation, and in our own parish here in in Clinton, Massachusetts. I really had the sense that there was a great need for music that would somehow connect people to our, our great heritage of sacred music, of chant and polyphony, that would be firmly rooted in that heritage, but which would also resonate in all sorts of normal people. In other words, um, and there's, there is a scola, that's, but there has been a scola here that's been singing now since 1989 in our parish. It's a long, long tradition of, of great uh, classical sacred music of chant and polyphony. Mm -hmm. And I was director of that uh, scola for many years. But I, I realized that many, if not most of the parishioners, for them, it was a foreign language. To, to, if we were simply to do Gregorian chant, and even if, even if it's in English, and if we were s simply to do these great works of polyphony, we would really, we we wouldn't be able to somehow really connect with so many of the people. And these are people of goodwill. Sure. So that really, that really inspired me to draw on my own gifts to, to see, well, can we, can we compose settings here that are somehow connected to the tradition, but which also inspire normal people and right. they draw them in, draw them into the mystery of the mass and draw them in is almost like as a bridge to our, our, the, the wonderful traditions that we have. So that's really the, the uh, origin of this particular mass setting. Oh, thank you for that explanation. It, it gives such a background to what we're gonna listen to. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk more about it, of course, as the hour goes along, but let's take a listen now to the Kyrie from Paul Jernberg's St. Philip Neri Mass.
And you just listened to the curate from Paul Jernberg's St. Philip Neri Mass. And Paul is our guest today on Sounds from the Spires here on the Catholic Channel of Sirius XM 129. And I'm Dr. Jennifer Pasquale, your host. Is your parish named St. Philip Neri, Paul? No, no, it's not. <laughs> it's uh, St. John, the guardian of Our Lady. Okay. It's in Massachusetts. It used to be Saint, simply St. John the Evangelist. Then we had a merger of three different parishes. Ah. And uh, so, but, uh, but St. Philip Neri is, is definitely a, a hero of mine. Oh, I a see. Great inspiration, I think intercessor as well. And uh, so that's, that's how the name got there. Okay, that makes sense. Great. And Paul is our guest today, Paul Jernberg, a wonderful composer and champion of liturgical music for the Catholic Church. And so earlier in your career, I was reading your bio, Paul, that you uh, did a lot of work with secular music. How did you get involved with sacred music? Well, it's a long story, but <laughs> yeah, to put it in a nutshell, I lived in Sweden for about 10 years from uh -huh. 1993 to 1993. And it's there that I really discovered the Catholic faith. And even though, I mean, I'd, I'd grown up in Chicago, I uh, you know, had all sorts of Catholic friends, but I didn't really... I didn't really see it. I didn't really know what it was all about. And it was in living in Sweden, which is not a Catholic country by any means. It's a very secularized culture. I lived close to a, a wonderful, churchly minded Franciscan community. They're still going strong. Um, and they had, they had the daily divine office and daily mass, of course, uh, with often with Gregorian chant. But they also... Uh, used a lot from the East, from the Eastern Orthodox traditions of, of men's uh, harmonized chant and so forth. And that was, a, that was a, an epiphany for me. Uh, and it's coming into it as a musician and, and living close to these friars. On the one hand, it was an epiphany as far as discovering the beauty of the Catholic faith and the truth of the Catholic faith. On the other hand, it was a discovery of the sacred music tradition, which was part and parcel of that. And that that spoke of the truth of the faith, or the, of, and spoke of this gift of universe of unity and universality that the Catholic Church gives us. Uh -huh. And it was a it was a very profound uh, influence. And that so subsequent to that time uh, in 1993, moved back to the states. And but I really received. Um, a sort of a fire, a gift that was a, something of a fire inside me that I, I realized that I, I, I had a sense of a responsibility actually to share this with others. So when we came back to the States, my wife is from France. We met when I was living in Sweden. Uh, we came back, moved back to Chicago in 93. And uh, I started working in the inner city as a music director and teacher in the inner city there. And there I had the opportunity to, uh, uh, to work with their particular needs, but little by little also, it's, it, w it wasn't like, I, there's no way that I could simply say, okay, we're just going to do uh, Eastern Orthodox <laughs> and, and Gregorian chant and polyphony. It's going to be bent. Of course you can't, you know, you can't simply uh, push that on anybody. You've got right. to find out where they're at, what their traditions are when somehow go step by step in, in a journey of discovery, so to speak. <laughs> Uh, and, and so it was beautiful. You know, I worked at the, began working in that parish and, and teaching in that, uh, school and that's where it started. And then after two years there, we moved out to Massachusetts and I got, I started teaching at Trivium and work and working as music director at St. John, John's parish in Clinton. Mm -hmm. So that was, um, that's a shortened version of I got into sacred music and um, how I've continued. Yeah, that's wonderful. What a wonderful journey to, to be able to find that and, and, and discover it in a foreign country and then come back and yeah. then share your talents and, and your, your, your passion. Yeah. So Paul Jernberg is our guest today here on Sounds from the Spires. And let's take a listen now to his The Love of God.
And you just listened to the Salve Regina, composed by our guest today, Paul Jernberg. And just before the break, we listened to The Love of God, also by Paul. And Paul, are these wonderful uh, compositions available for publication that people can purchase? They certainly are. Uh -huh. All you need to do is go to pauljernberg.com and uh -huh. you'll find them all. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. And you are... You don't have just the Mass of St. Philip Neri. I also discovered by looking through your website, or I think it's the Institute's website, that you also have a Mass of St. Monica and a Mass of Misa Parva. That's, that's correct. Yeah, and yes. both, both are available also for they are uh, purchase. Mm -hmm. They are. The, the, uh, the, both the Misa Parva and the Mass of St. Monica, uh, we've been trying to record them over the past year, but we've been thwarted by all the COVID I know everybody, <laughs> but we did just have a record. We just recorded the Mass of Saint Monica, so we're preparing that for for uh, sharing and and publication as well. Oh. If, if we we have the score available on our website, mm -hmm. but um, the recording will also be available soon. Sure, Misa that's we that's also the score is available, and we're planning to record that in March. Uh huh. And why St. Monica? Is she another hero of yours? <laughs> well, I was actually a music director at the parish of St. Monica in uh, Methuen okay. ah. for four years. Mm -hmm. And so that was, uh, that was sort of the immediate reason was that I, I was there. But it's really, there's really a much stronger connection than simply that.
it's, it's really the, you know, my own experience and my, my mechanism that of my wife of, you know, praying for our own children and knowing so many other parents who pray for their children and pray for all sorts of loved ones. And, and that sometimes it seems like we're not going anywhere. We're not getting, you know, that there's no response or there's no, um, there's no hope. It might seem that way sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, and we can think of that with all sorts of situations. You know, St. Monica, who was praying so fervently for so many years and weeping tears for her son, Augustine, you know, in a way that's a, a wonderful model for us, not only for our children, but for other things that are dear to our heart, people who are dear to our heart and situations that are dear to our heart that we should never give up hope and that we should always keep praying as, as Jesus tells us and to, you know, to be strong in faith and to ask and seek and knock. And so that's all included in this. <laughs> that's, that's all part of the inspiration for this mass setting as well is, is this aspect of fervent prayer for those whom we love. And so I've also, you know, we also have a set of propers that are that, that will be recorded with that as well that are that reflect this theme. And uh, so that's a little bit of the background. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And thank you for sharing your passion and your 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 spirituality and just uh, encouraging prayer. That's really great. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll look forward to that mass of St. Monica and the Misa Parva as well. Mm-hmm. And um, are you also an organist, Paul? Yes, I I'm not, um, how do I say, it's not, I don't claim or or present myself as a, an accomplished organist in the sense of giving concerts or, but I, I've learned to to do it well as far as accompaniment is needed in, uh-huh. in mass. And and so for that, uh, but, I, but I'm not, I'm not playing the organ now uh-huh. at all. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I, admire, I greatly admire my friends who are great, Great organist, <laughs> such as Michael Obesh, right? Richard Clark, both of them are very fine organists. Yes, they are. They are fine musicians. Yeah. The reason I ask is because you mentioned Methuen, and there's that wonderful Methuen instrument um, at the hall, um, which I had the privilege of playing twice. It's a fabulous instrument and a nice little space too. It's a yeah. great, great place for organ playing. And then you mentioned you were also in uh, Gothenburg or Göteborg, Sweden, Good for boy. yeah for ten years. Do you speak Swedish? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I do. I do speak Swedish. Yeah. Because they have that fantastic school, uh, Go Art, uh, where they are building all these replicas of different pipe organs. Um, they, oh. one of the big projects they did while I was still at school at, at Eastman, uh, we visited Gothenburg twice and oh. uh, saw the development of the organ that they were replicating from you know, the Baroque times and its inauguration. And so I wondered if you had anything to do uh, with that whole organ scene. <laughs> while you're not there. when I was living there, <laughs> unfortunately, uh-huh. uh, but that's great to hear that. Yeah. So I probably was in uh, Jotaburg at the same time you were twice. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, a wonderful, wonderful, yeah. wonderful place. And so that you're very privileged to have lived there. It's, it's oh, really yeah. a beautiful place. Yeah. It is. It is. And I'm st- still in touch with my friends there. Uh-huh. It really, the people I met, as they say in Sweden, when, when, when you make a friend in Sweden, it's a friend for life. Uh-huh. And uh, it's true. I mean, it's, many of my dearest friends still are over there. Uh, do you speak Swedish? Do you, do you plan on writing any uh, choral music in Swedish? Well, that's a good question. I, I actually <laughs> have done a, I've done a setting of the Memorare in Swedish. Really? And that's that's available on our website for all you Swedish listeners. Oh wow! You wanted to check that out. Is that in no, print? In print as it, well? It, it's it's not. We haven't printed it simply because we think that there's probably not a lot a big market for Swedish memorize <laughs> in the United States. Um, so it's but people can download it as uh-huh. a PDF and uh, and if there's a big demand, <laughs> we, we will start printing them. Wow! But the time being, it's just available as PDF. Swedish Memorare. Do you have an English one? Yes. Okay. I'll check that yeah. out. I have to dig and, more. And a Latin one as well. And that, <laughs> that started with a Latin one. It's very, it's quite fascinating to see, you know, the, the, the way in which different languages can, can inspire different musical ideas. And uh, sure. Yeah. Cause I had somebody ask me years ago if I knew a musical setting in the Memorare and I didn't. So now I'll have to check this out. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it was just recent. Well, it, 
it has been recorded or at least sung by the seminarians at St. Joseph's in Dunwoody. Okay. And because I did a, a, a men's choir arrangement of it as well. And I know they've sung it. And I've done a memorare of, to St. Joseph for their choir as well. Mm -hmm. which they've sung and recorded. Okay. So, yeah. I'll have to check it out or I'll just go up to the seminary and ask them for a copy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to do more settings in Swedish. I, you know, that's, I, I uh, there's several, there's a couple other languages that I've done some settings for, uh, and I'd love to continue with that. But we've, I also have a mass in Spanish. Oh, okay. Uh, Misa del Camino. Misa del Camino. Yeah, and that's, uh, we hope to publish that and record that within the next year or so. Okay. Uh, with also with propers, and it's, so it's a wonderful challenge. I, I've worked with different Spanish-speaking groups throughout the years, and it's, it's been a wonderful experience. And I just uh, so uh, it's been a great joy to be able to enter in, you know, to to uh, meditate on the on the text in Spanish and to to work on the on the settings. Right. Is your Misa del Camino for those who a lot of people who may be listening may also have to deal with liturgies in Spanish? Is that also congregation friendly? It is that okay. most definitely. All right. All of these settings of the ordinary of the mass are really intended to work both for choir and congregation. And, and part of the, so it's not, I don't think, I hope it's not simplistic in the sense of just being sort of functional, bare bones music, but there's, there's hopefully it's grace. You know, all the melodies are graceful and there's, there's musical interest, but it's also meant so that the normal person can, can learn it by heart mm -hmm. through learning this music go deeper into the text and, and really make it their own. And this is, uh, this is one of the beauties, I think, of, of, of being able, of be able to do these, these settings is that sense that people really, they're, they're owning it and it's going deep and they're, uh, they're able to sing it with all their heart. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to check that out. Definitely. And um, everybody who's listening, uh, I encourage you to go to Paul's website. It's pauljernberg.org or com. Dot com. Dot com. Okay. And, and Magnificat Institute.org. Dot org. <laughs> PaulGermberg.com. Okay. There you go. And now let's take a listen to more of Paul's music. And this is St. Michael Prayer One. We'll take a listen to it and then we'll talk about it after the break. St. Michael Prayer One. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be
us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And you just listened to the Lord's Prayer from the Mass of St. Philip Neri. And just before the break, we listened to St. Michael Prayer 1 by our guest today, Paul Jernberg. And you're listening to Sounds from the Spires on the Catholic channel of Sirius XM 129. I'm Dr. Jennifer Pasquale, your host. Tell us about St. Michael Prayer. Is uh, St. Michael another one of your uh, favorite saints? Well, uh, yeah, I mean... (laughs) He's a lot of people's favorite. I love St. Michael, totally. But the reason for doing that was uh, not so much because um, I had been thinking a lot about St. Michael the Archangel, but it was more because I was asked to do it. I was asked to do it. And the first occasion was for, um, it was for, I guess you'd say a contest way back in 2007, I think it was by the, um, by a foundation out of New York City, and, and it was a, a publicized through the National Catholic Register and so forth. So I, when I saw that, I just and I was at the time we had our little Magnificat Academy, and choir school, and so I just it was like if I had this inspiration fall on my lap for that, and I did that, and then amazingly that was uh, accepted and and uh, it won yeah. the competition. Now. That's not to say that I, you know, I, I'm sure there's other wonderful uh, works being done by others, and I would, uh, but I happened to win that competition, and so went down to New York City. They had a, you know, and that was sung at at St. Michael's Parish in Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Uh, now the the second the second version though is very interesting because I was teaching at Thomas More College uh, for several years. And working with David Clayton, are you familiar with David? He's got the Way of Beauty website, and he's doing all sorts of amazing things. But I David don't get is from England. He was, <laughs> he was he was teaching with me. He was teaching at Thomas More College at that time, and he said, "Paul, we really need a setting of the Saint Michael Prayer, which we like to sing or at least recite at the end of each Mass." And so I said, "Well, here I've got a setting. I did you know back you know several years ago." And he said, "Paul, it's just, it's lovely, but it doesn't quite work for us." And I said, well, what do you want? And I said, I said <laughs> something simpler, more maybe Byzantine or something. So I said, I think I've got an idea. And so I the, basically this, I think the setting you're listening to now uh, is one, you know, I, I was, I'm familiar with different, some of the different Byzantine uh, tones. And I said, well, let's try this melody. It's, it's, it's a traditional melody. It's not my, it's not my, comp- the melody itself is not my composition. So let's try this and see if it would fit. And we were sitting together, and was and I, was, and that's how it happened. And so, I, so I put it all together, and I, and and then it became the rest is history, because uh, they it just connected with the students at Thomas More College, and then different people started singing it, recording it, and we hear, started hearing from all over the place. And now it's it's being sung uh, in many different places. So. Um, so that's how that went. Now, so there are two versions. Yes. So if, if if you did have number one, mm-hmm. that would have been the first one from Magnificat Academy. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Number two is the one that's in the uh, Fire of Your Love. Okay. That is, um, so that's the one. That's your favorite of the two. Well, I like them both. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we can we can have people listen to both of them. <laughs> okay, good. And I think that, and of course, people can listen on SoundCloud to both of them. But the um, the thing about the second one that I did with David mm-hmm. is really that it's it's true that it's just uh, it somehow it resonates with so many people in an uh, unexpected way. And when we recorded it, we did it with our, our core unum chorales. The chorale that I directed, and we have over we had over 130 singers for that, plus the congregation singing it. It was an amazing uh, recording. 
So I, I, I'm sure that people have a chance to listen to that. I think that's the, by far the best recording we have of either setting. Okay, well, we'll listen to that now too then. This is the St. Okay. Michael prayer setting too. Okay, okay, good. And you just listen to St. Michael prayer setting two, which we were just, uh, Michael just explained so well right now. And thank you for the background behind all of that. And it's also a very popular prayer as, as most people know, and um, a wonderful saint to pray to and everybody, all yeah. children know this prayer. So it, it's great. Right. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> and you're listening to Sounds with the Spires on the Catholic channel of Sirius XM 129. Paul Chernberg is our guest and uh, you've, composed the St. Philip Neri Mass and St. Monica and St. Parva. And so what, what else is in your future in terms of composition? Yes. Well, as I mentioned, we do have the Misa del Camino that is somewhat complete. I've finished all the parts, but it still needs to be tried out, just like you need to try out shoes. And, you know, <laughs> and we, have, we have a wonderful Hispanic community here, and I, I just haven't, we haven't gotten to doing it together, but that's essential that we actually try it. And typically I'll make adjustments because it needs to work for the, for the singers. And uh, beyond that, uh, we've had some interest in po my possibly doing a setting of the French ordinary and, and some propers of, for the mass in French. Uh -huh. I'm very, it would be very excited. I'm, I'm very excited about that possibility. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, uh, there's a, I, I'm doing a long-term project for our parish, uh, which is a settings of all the propers for the three-year cycle. That's a lot. <laughs> it's, and I, who know, I, you know, can I finish that in my, in my lifetime? I don't know, but because it's, it's, <laughs> there's a lot that goes into it, but I'm, you know, we're, I've got a good start on that and, and I'm composing every month. We have a sung mass here every month at St. John's. And it's a Sunday evening, and there I'm, I'm composing all the propers for each Sunday that we sing. Uh -huh. that, that's part of this big project also for the three-year cycle. And uh, it's wonderful because we have the, the entire Mass is sung. Everything that can be sung by the priest and the congregation in the, is sung, whether it be the ordinary, you know, for everything from uh -huh. the reading to the confidior in English to the, you know, and so forth, and the curia and everything. Good for you. And so it's it's quite amazing because um, this is it's it's a real gift to discover. There's something about singing the whole mass, and I know that's that's not all, always possible or <laughs> for in many situations. But we're excited about exploring this possibility and sharing with others what we're experiencing because it gives a whole unity and a and a flow to yes. the mass that hopefully is helping people to really enter into the prayer of the mass more deeply. That's right. And good for you. I used to teach seminarians myself and I said, you can sing everything except the sermon. I mean, if you want to sing the sermon, you can too, but everything can be sung. <laughs> do you have clergy that can sing everything? Yes. That's great. We, do. we have a couple nearby. We have a, one of our uh, a young priests here in the diocese is just doing a great job. He's with us pretty much every month and he's just marvelous. He's, uh, he uh, sings all of the priest parts and he does it with ease. Nice. Also, we've also worked with a local Benedictine uh, community and the abbot who, who was actually, when he started working with us, he was simply Father Mark. Now he's Abbot Mark. Huh. And he's, he sings with us as well some of the time. And he does a wonderful job of singing all the parts. And I'm uh, trying to help our, our pastor. Uh -huh. too. He's open <laughs> to that. 
but it's a, he's got a lot of other things on his plate. So it's not always easy for a pastor to take time to do that. Mm -hmm. He's that's, been totally supportive, which has been a great joy. That's great. That's wonderful that you have the support. And yeah, it is hard for a pastor who's in charge of everything to, to buckle down and practice. I know that's tough, yes. but you can get there. You'll get there. <laughs> and he's got a great liturgical voice. He, oh, nice. He's listening. <laughs> the gym. Hi, Father. <laughs> we need you. You're so because you, so, yeah. you can do them so very, very, very well. <laughs> yes, we need priests who can sing, and you're so blessed to have somebody like Paul you know, to work together with. It's, it's, it's a great uh, collaboration. Uh, Paul, let's sneak in one more movement from your mass, and this is the Lamb of God from Saint Philip Neri. Mm -hmm. And you just listened to the Lamb of God from Paul Jernberg's St. Philip Neri Mass, which is available on his website, pauljernberg.com. And you can also go to the magnificatinstitute.org to find out more about the Magnificat Institute. Uh, Paul, it's wonderful to have you here today. Any last words you might want to say, or um, do you want to say anything to help promote the Institute for people who might have joined in late in the program? Sure. Well, I, I guess it would be an invitation to people to certainly to pray for us in our mission and also to, to join us in praying for this great need for the renewal of sacred music and in, in our church. And I think that part of there's at least three parts to that that I've mentioned when we talk about renewal. Part of it is discovery, because people oftentimes simply need to discover the greatness and the beauty of this gift of our tradition. And, and secondly, it's in uh, formation. So we need, we need to renew our formation. And then also in cultivation of learning to sing our tradition well, but also cultivating new works, such as the compositions that we're trying to do. But there's other great composers out there too that we're, we're cultivating uh, new works that are worthy of our tradition. So please pr join us in praying for this renewal. And, and uh, at the heart of which is praying for the, the daily conversion of each of us. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful message. And yeah, check it out again. It's magnificatinstitute.org. And also go to Paul's website, pauljernberg.com to find his compositions there. And um, for those who also joined in late, uh, can we find other people's um, compositions on the Magnificat website? Um, uh, you know, I, uh, no. Well, I, I take it back because see, the thing is, just there's just such a copyright issue. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so basically, but we, you know, we encourage people to go to other websites, and and there's one score that we have, mm -hmm. which is the entire score from our the Fire of Your Love, which includes music by Roman Herco, uh -huh. who lives in New York, oh. and and also by Thomas Tallis and other. So there, there there is music by more, you know composers from the renaissance as well as contemporary composers but most the great majority of the music is our, our my compositions right yes and uh, wonderful compositions too i'm going to check it out because uh, we need to be singing your music at st patrick's we need to be doing that it's a what, lovely and we need to get your name out there more so paul jernberg.com for his music and then the magnificat institute.org for the magnificat institute Paul, it's really been such a pleasure speaking with you today. And gosh, when you make those recordings of the uh, the Mass of St. Monica and the, Ma the Misa Parva, 
Yes. We'll definitely have you on again because people need to know these, these compositions of yours. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you, Paul. And uh, good luck with your compositions and getting back together with the, the singers out of COVID and uh, just that everything will start flourishing once the everything comes back to normal. And I know, I know you're going to finish that three-year project. I know you will, the proffers. So good luck with that, too. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. And we'll finish up by listening to uh, one more movement from Paul's St. Philip Mary Mass. So thank you to Paul for being with us today. Thank you to Robert for editing. And we'll listen to the glory to God from the St. Philip Mary Mass. Have a great week and stay tuned next week for Sounds from the Spires on the Catholic Channel.